Hi, Steve Sosnick here with today's Interactive Brokers Midday Market Update for Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. Got to make sure I get the year right. Um, we, uh, another day, another rally, um, sort of sort of like yesterday's in terms of the setup so far, where uh, yesterday we opened strongly, uh, got back to about unchanged by, you know, call it 1030, 11 o'clock Eastern time, maybe 1130 ish, and then built momentum throughout the day. And we all heard the headlines about Apple's three trillion valuation. And um, a lot of that was based on Tesla going up um, you know, starting it up eight, eight or ten percent, and then finishing up about fourteen. Um, at this point, when you have a stock that is <clears throat> the fifth largest and therefore the fifth biggest weight in um, in cap weighted indexes such as SPX and NDX, you more or less have no choice but to help push the index higher. And so, if you have Apple, the largest company, and Tesla, the fifth largest company. Both pushing, both helping to push major indices higher. Well, where do you think they're going to go? That, that I'm kind of overstating it a bit because it was a fairly broad-based rally yesterday, decent, decently so. Um, but today um, marks the end of the Santa Claus period, so to speak. I'm not a big believer in the artificial time frames of saying, oh, you know, the Santa Claus rally is here, and then you know, sell in May, go away, and, 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 and the various seasonality. It works, but only up to a point. That said, this more or less worked, although I'd say it's a, a, a barbell Santa Claus rally because we rallied really uh, the first trading day after Christmas, which in uh, many of the Commonwealth is called Boxing Day, so they weren't even around. Um, but we rallied that Monday. Um, we kind of meandered the rest of the week, and then we resumed the rally uh, yesterday, so uh, if you want to, if you want to term it that way, we would say it was a barbell Santa Claus rally because it was it was on either end. Um, okay, so what does that really portend? I'm going to say very little. Um, there are some schools of thought that say if we get the year off to a good start, you know, if we get the the year off to a good start, it, you know, portends a good month, and then it portends a good, a good month, portends a good year. Some of that's pretty much statistical noise because markets go up most of the time. And so you get periods where it goes up most of the time and then the year goes up most of the time. Of course, you have correlation like that. So I'm not I'm not a big believer in that. Also, last year and I last year completely disproved um, disproved that that theory because um, first trading day last year was terrible. We were down over a percent um, and, and just it looked lousy. And obviously, um, like many others, that proved to be yet another buying opportunity because, uh, you know, basically markets closed, S&P closed about a thousand points higher from there. So, you know, nearly 30 percent um, off those lows. Uh, so let's not read too much into the first couple of days. Um, what we're starting to see here is uh, different different readings coming from the stock and the bond market. It's, it's conflicting. And that's where some of the stuff becomes tricky. Uh, because yesterday we really saw bond yields tick much higher. As of now, excuse me, I'll just pause and look at my other screen. They, they continue, they're continuing a bit higher today, although not to the same degree. The two-year yield is actually a shade lower. Um, five to 30 is a shade higher, one to three basis points. Um, but there's a couple different ways you can read this. And number one would be you'd say, well, bond market's higher because they're expecting a stronger economy and that's good for stocks. That's quite fair. Um, that was probably the way the market interpreted yesterday. Actually, I don't really think the market thought that deeply about it. I just think it was the first day of the new year. There was seasonality and, 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 and some good news and some big stocks and off we went. But that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is um, bond traders picking taking a sober view of things and saying, okay, the Fed is, if the Fed is really going to be tapering its bond purchases, which as we noted, it, it didn't do during December. We'll see later this week how much of the excess purchasing that they did in December, between December 20, between December 2nd and the 23rd, which was what the H.4.1 reports showed. Um, and you can, so it's out there on the internet. You can look it up for yourself. Um, we actually, it actually showed a rise in securities holdings of about 130 billion. 
um, that kind of, as, as you may have noted, is a bit higher than the 90 billion we would have anticipated um, from the Fed's uh, tapering announcements. It is entirely possible that 40 billion um, in securities matured or more, and that was what that was why the Fed's excess purchases were going on. But as of last month, if you're just reacting to open market stuff, they were buying. They were buying to. to they were buying, and so it didn't seem like a taper. Um, maybe now there was a little bit of a, a realization that that this that this would stop. Um, you take the biggest buyer by far out of the out of the markets. You expect prices to go down, and that's I think that's one idea of what we saw. Um, and so we really have to wrestle with the idea of what are we, what are we looking at? And and I think I, I think I don't want to belabor the bond market picture too much. Um, I wrote in the note yesterday that there are two ways, to, you know, about, talking about these two ways to look at it. Um, and one of them, of course, would be you've heard this idea that the, that you know higher interest rates are bad for the high cap tech stocks, high, high highly capitalized tech stocks. There's no evidence of that, at least over the last year or so. In theory, yeah, if you're discounting these future cash flows of, of these stocks um, by a bigger discount rate, it, it should depress their valuations. But they're not trading on valuations. Um, the, the, you know, I asked the question, why is Apple 20 or 25 percent worth more, worth 20 or 25 percent more than it was two months ago? It, it's not a matter of the actual valuations. So I, I really throw that out. In theory, it makes sense. In reality, it doesn't because the, the, the stocks that, that we're being concerned about with the valuations, it, there's no evidence that investors right now seem to care about that. So let's take it from there. Um, so I think, but the bond market does bear watching because bond traders tend to be what I'm going to call a more sober bunch. Um, you know, they, they don't really have much else to worry about. They're, they're they want their interest rates. They want they want their coupons. They want their money returned to them. They don't want any hassles in the middle. Um, and and I think that it bears watching. If we start to see a, a, a you know some real pressure coming into the bond market, um, that's we that's going away on equities. I think, and that that's that plays into the argument that I laid out last week. Um, that I expect a bit more volatility coming from this because because the Fed will not be um, gunning the market so much. I, I think there's there'll be a key when we see the the next H.4.1 report from the Fed, uh, which comes out Thursday afternoon. I think it'll be interesting to see if um, my theory about maturation is correct. Um, if not, well then you really then you really have to question what the Fed was doing, why they were why they were buying bonds. I can understand it if they wanted a net of $90 billion um, in terms of securities on the, in terms of added securities over a one month period. I don't understand it if, um, if that doesn't prove to be the case. Um, of course, the biggest announcement this week is Friday. You have the monthly payrolls report. Um, I, I actually wonder if that's going to be as meaningful as it has been in some respects, because you know, people were really looking to the idea that the Fed was going to, um, you know, they have the dual mandate, and it's clear that the inflation, you know, the stable prices portion is a problem. Um, the, the full employment portion, I will argue, we're much closer to full employment than not. Um, but, you know, let's see what happens. Or I, I suspect there's always a shock. Um, anyway, I will talk to you all soon and have a great week. Bye bye.